Hello, welcome back to Physio Designer Tutorial Series. In this tutorial series, we are going to create a multi time scale adaptive threshold model, which is one of models of neuron membrane potential. On Physio Designer, abbreviating the model name, we call this as MAT model. Dividing into a couple of movies, we will create a MAT model piece by piece. In this movie, we are going to create a postsynaptic current generator. The way to simulate the alpha function is quite informative, and the way to model it is quite straightforward. Alright, let's start with observing the MAT model. This model is composed of the stimulus spike generator, synaptic current generator, and MAT model. Calling Flint, run a simulation. Firstly this is the input Poisson spike train. The input spikes induce the postsynaptic current. Then the membrane potential is calculated based on the current. Simultaneously, the adaptive threshold is calculated. The points where the membrane potential touches to the threshold are considered as spike generations, which are outputs of the MAT model. In this movie, we will create a postsynaptic current generator. When a postsynaptic neuron receives spikes from other neurons at excitatory synapses, the conductances of ion channels, typically sodium ion channel, increase, and allow ions flow into the cell, generating an excitatory postsynaptic current. The postsynaptic current can be calculated in proportion to the conductance. When more spikes arrive in a short time window, accumulation of effects of each spike yields larger current. The dynamics of the conductance after an arrival of a spike can be modeled by an alpha function. Actually, the curve of the channel conductance can be decomposed to individual alpha functions starting at every spike as shown in the slide. The alpha function can be written as the first equation in the slide, and its shape is exemplified in the right panel. Tau is the decay time constant. In a panel, there are three examples of alpha functions with different time constants. The postsynaptic current is modeled by summation of alpha functions. Tj represents a time at which a spike arrives to the postsynaptic neuron. This formulation is clear, however, this is not convenient for simulation. We can derive the differential form of the alpha function, which is more suitable to be used in dynamical models. Let's consider a derivative of g with respect to t, by defining a function f. Given by an exponential function as shown in the slide, the derivative of g can be given as a linear function of f and g. The derivative of f with respect to t also can be calculated, and given by a simple linear function of f. These two ordinary differential equations of g and f give a differential form of an alpha function. If we take the initial values of g and f as 0 and c over tau, respectively, an alpha function shown in the upper right panel can be obtained as a time course of g. The maximum value of the alpha function is given by c over e, at t equals tau. That is, c over e gives the maximum conductance of the ion channel. A point of g equals 0, and f equals 0 is a stable fixed point. So a state point converges to that point after a while. Then, how can we calculate the dynamics of the conductance in response to arriving spikes? It can be done by adding a value, c over tau, to the current value of f during a simulation, when a spike arrives. Let's call the value given by, c over tau, as, f jump. We can observe the dynamics on a phase plane spanned by f and g, and a time course of g. Assume that at t equals t1, one spike arrives indicated by a green marker in both of two panels. Then at that time, the value of f is incremented by f jump, instantaneously. This does not change the value of g directory, but changes the velocity of g's change. The first peak is indicated by a yellow marker. Then at time equals t2, indicated by a red marker, the next spike arrives, and again f is incremented by f jump, the second peak is indicated by a purple marker, then the state goes back to a resting state indicated by a green marker. As you see, in this scheme, we do not need to calculate the summation of alpha functions. Instead of that, what we need to do is to increment f, when a spike arrives. 
All right, based on the knowledge on the alpha function, let's create a model on Physio Designer. At the end of creation of the postsynaptic current generator, we will combine this model with the Poisson Spike Train Generator model, which we created in the previous tutorial, and run a simulation to observe the result. Let's begin with creating a functional module, set name to the module, something like post synaptic current, but can be anything, and right click on the module, and select edit physical quantity in the menu. The first physical quantity is the conductance G, its type is the state, the initial value is zero, and at the implementation tab, the definition is of the ODE type. The equation is, diff g time equals f minus g over tau. Physical quantities f and tau have not been defined yet. If click yes button in the popping up dialog, their entries are automatically created. Note that, their type would be set to the static parameter by default. Next, select f in the table, change the type to the state in the basic setting tab. It is ok to leave the initial value zero and the definition at the implementation tab is, diff f time equals minus f over tau. Then, to define the increment of f at a spike arrival, move to the extra implementation tab, select conditional, at the definition type, order is before, set the condition as follows, if spike is greater than or equal to 1, f equals f plus c over tau. Here spike has not been defined yet, but it is a physical quantity representing a spike arrival. If it is 1, it means there is a spike, and 0, no spike. A physical quantity C is also not yet defined. Next physical quantity is tau. It is of the static parameter type, and its value is 2. Then physical quantity spike. This should be of the variable parameter type, because it receives spike train from outside, taking binary values, 1 or 0. At the implementation tab, the definition type must be assigned. For now, there is no import to be assigned, so need to create one. For example, its name can be like, input spike, and click add button. Physical quantity C is also of the static parameter type. Set value 1.78. Finally, let's add a physical quantity for the synaptic current. The type is variable parameter, and name is ISIN. Its definition is ISIN equals A times G. This physical quantity is the output of this module, hence, we want to associate this to an output to export the value. It is possible to set this at the basic setting tab, at the right side area. Set the name of the new output, and click add button. Then one output is added in the list, and select it. The last physical quantity is A, representing a coefficient to magnify the conductance to calculate the current. Here it is set to 0.9. Good job! All necessary physical quantities were defined. Click OK button and close the dialog. Now let's save the model. To perform simulations, we need to add the input spikes to the postsynaptic current module. We can use the Poisson spike generator model, that we created already in the previous tutorial. From the menu bar, select file and add model, to add another model on the canvas, and select the model file that we created before. It is simple to integrate these two modules, that is, link them by an edge from the output of the Poisson spike module to an import of the postsynaptic current module, and save the model again. Now call Flint, and run a simulation. Let's observe iSyn, at first, it shows stochastic fluctuation, this is principally the same for G since they are proportional. Add spike in the graph. You'd notice that just after spikes arrived densely, the current increased. And once spike arrival became rather sparse, the current dropped down. At the end, let's observe the dynamics of F. It showed jumps concurrently with spike arrivals. 
Alright, that's all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next tutorial. Goodbye.